Why did this video of this Asian Australian TikToker crying in Vietnam garner such a backlash against her? What was she trying to do and what can we learn from this and what's the larger conversation that's coming from this? Let's run the clip. This lady rode our coconut boat in Vietnam. She made me cry because she tried so hard to make us happy. And it breaks my heart to see these people work so hard to make a living in Vietnam. Everyone in this country hustles from such a young age and to see someone her age do something so laborious in hot weather. I want to come back soon and have the capacity to give them more. Long story short, Andrew Fiona Wang is a Chinese Australian travel vlogger and uh, she went to Vietnam, Andrew. There was a lady who was paid to take them across the river. They had a great experience together. She obviously felt some connection with this lady, but then that prompted her to make a crying video saying, oh my God, I feel so bad for the people in Vietnam. And then of course, this got some strong reactions both for her, but mostly against her. Yeah, let's talk about uh, why some people are accusing her of exploiting the old woman. And also let's talk about the people who support her. Guys, we're gonna break it down. We're gonna give you our thoughts and then we're gonna go through the comment section. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. From silly to serious, Andrew, this is silly, but I think it ended up touching a bunch of nerves that were serious, right? All right, so my initial thoughts, you're not wrong for being emotional. You're not wrong for having a human connection. Obviously, like I even at a younger age, Age, I've traveled, I've seen poverty in a different way that I didn't see in America or in the same way, but just with different people that I connect with differently. Cause like, you know, some of them do look like one of your grandmothers or aunties. Yeah, it's usually the grandma yeah. that gets you. Yeah. That's yeah. the most archetypical It's okay situation. to feel emotional and cry. Even it's okay just because your life is so different than them. However, to film it, edit it, add the music, hashtag poverty, and then say you wanted to come back and help Vietnam. I think that was tone deaf. That's right. what it I would say. It was tone deaf and possibly came from a place of privilege or uh, just uh, like having very limited life experiences, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. I think um, her worldview is kind of small. What do you think, though? Because obviously there were some reactions against Fiona Wang that were light and some that were very extreme. What do you think of the more extreme ones that were like, you <laughs> poverty porn purveyor? Uh, no, I, I don't think she's exploiting the old woman. I think if she ran a whole TikTok channel off of the old lady, or if, you know, those channels or, or uh, content where they just go around giving like a little bit of money to a poor person and then see their crazy reaction, and then you're just benefiting off their reaction. It's not real content. I think that is more exploitative. One TikTok is not, but I can see why people thought that but i think that's an extreme reaction and i and i don't think that's true yeah i would generally tell people to not make this type of video because it's very tone deaf to global power dynamics but i don't falter because andrew you got to think about tiktok tiktok is is filled with people just having a human experience in the very micro sense of like the fishbowl or the nano fishbowl they've been raised in these are not journalists these are not <laughs> celebrities these are not people who have been coached to understand socioeconomic status country to country relations no. any of that stuff they're almost just like thinking about everything through the lens of just whatever sheltered life that they lived, right? Well, literally the, the TikTok before, she's like, check out this balmy. This is the best balmy in all of Ho Chi Minh City. Oh my gosh, I feel so right. bad for them. So and I'm like... <laughs> I see the one side where she's just being a girl. Girls typically are emotional. She feels bad. She connected with somebody, had a joyful ride with somebody that maybe feels like her grandma or a grand auntie, but obviously probably did have a very, at least on a financial level, impoverished life, right? And then that's one side, but I could also see Vietnamese people specifically just seeing a privileged upper middle class to wealthy Chinese Australian girl judging her way of life. Yeah. I yeah. can see that, that that's the flip side. Yeah, and you'll see in the comments section that we're about to review that some people are like, you know what? You don't need to feel bad for us. That's okay. She's doing her job. And yes, she does have less than you, but that doesn't mean that she's unhappy. So anyways, let's get into the comment section. All right, the first comment section was a little bit more of a macro takeaway, Andrew. And it was basically like saying, let, let this just be a caution to everybody in the Western world who thinks that money and materialism is everything. This lady in the river is probably happy and has everything she needs, man. Why don't you just give the lady some money, share a hug, and call it a day? There is no reason to be crying into the camera saying, I'd like to come back and help these people someday. Yo, the I would like to come back and help them is that's the that's a that's the funny statement. But anyways, I would say, yeah, I mean, you know, just tip the lady, give them a smile. And honestly, that's that lady's job. It's not to say that she probably doesn't want more, but happiness is a mindset. And sometimes when you grow up like that and you're already set in your ways and your routine, then you're just happy doing that. So I think, again, 
Shedding a tear even by yourself on your own, that's okay. You can have emotions. That's fine. Right. You, I've you been feel emotional. free to like be a human and process things how you process things, even though you haven't been educated on you. It's not like you're the head of Peace Corps yeah, and seen There was one time in, in Shanghai, I saw an old impoverished lady. She was dragging a cart full of like stuff she was collecting so from recycle. So much cardboard. So much cardboard. Yeah, and it was a big a trunk that she was carrying, really old lady. And I wanted to give her some money. You know, because it reminded you of my mom. Yeah, right? and it was, it was laid outside of the club, and I, and I handed her some money and she said buyong, buyong. like she don't want it and then after that she's I, just working her job she's living her life i did feel emotional in that moment but i did not film it and go tell the world about it and then say i wanted to save her life that's all i'm saying i think a lot of the vitriol against fiona wang uh because you could say that it was too extreme and it was like od it actually comes from a hatred of influencers right yeah. somebody was like dude i'm so sick of social media stars they're so talentless but they want to be so famous they're reaching for every sort of incident they can to get points and go viral and get clicks and get views Dave, like you said you know she's not a writer she's not a journalist she's not a a uh, philanthropist. So when she said, I want to come back to Vietnam and uplift the Vietnamese economy and change them to a, a first, like third generation capital, whatever, like she was trying, like, she was just saying stuff, and I get it. She was emotional. They just, she doesn't understand what she's saying. Yeah, I don't think she had any bad intentions about it, but, of course, I'm not blaming anybody for perceiving it how they perceived it because totally the tones were there. Somebody said, this girl must live in a bubble. I live in America, and there's homeless poverty on my street every single day. Feel bad and cry for the single mom working at McDonald's then, too. If she's a travel blogger... Where the hell is she traveling to? And by the way, yes, even this poor Vietnamese lady can still afford a coffee and a chat with her friends on the sidewalk and have peace of mind. You have to understand, they came out of such a difficult war era. You guys cannot even imagine what that lady's been through. She's happy. Yeah, I think poverty, it hits you differently, though, especially when you travel to a place that uh, you relate to. And I think that's starting, I mean, it's it happens like, you know, if you go back and visit your motherland, wherever that may be in Asia or Africa or, you know, places that there are a lot of rural and like poor people. Yeah, you could feel bad, you know? Um, so it, it does hit differently than America, I would say, in reply to this comment. Yeah, that, that is true. Somebody said, uh, I'm Vian American myself, and I don't know why Fiona Wang is getting so much hate. It really is abject poverty over there caused by the ruling communist uh, regime. Life does suck, and people have no options about what they can pick as a career. So I don't know why everybody's mad at her. So this was a little bit of a politically charged thing, right? Like, this is a Vian American going back saying, yeah, I saw the same thing, and I thought it was bad. Yeah, I blame it on the rulers. Yeah, I think um, that's why I do believe the backlash is OD. It's overdone. Um, I don't think she deserved all of that. But I think if she was really trying to put out, and she edited the TikTok, so she thought about it before she posted it. If she was trying to do something that was actually helpful, I guess she could have explained more about Vietnam or said, you know, I'm going to learn about Vietnam, and, you know, or I'm going to go back to Australia and help the poor people back in Australia. This inspires me. That right, would to fight global poverty or something like that. That would right maybe make more sense, yeah. Somebody said, let's be honest here, there's a lot of tribalism and geopolitics at play. Fiona Wang presents as a very light-skinned, rich Chinese person from either China or Australia so let's be honest here there is a geopolitical thing or an east asian southeast asian tribalistic play at well yeah, yeah, yeah i do think what some people are saying they're touching they're they're talking about the fact that she being east asian her last name is wang it could be taiwanese chinese whatever right uh it feels like that it's like, oh, a privileged East Asian girl going to Southeast Asia and just seeing how poor it is and just being shocked. That's what, like, white people used to go and do to Africa, right, in Uganda. The white girl would be like, oh, my gosh, these Ugandan kids need right. shoes and, and need I, water. And I think that that's where the reference of uh, poverty porn or slum exploitation, those terms got hashtagged yeah. when discussing yeah, this. Yeah, right. Obviously, do I think it was nearly to that extent? No, but I could see what people are saying. Listen, some people actually go back to those places and help build like fresh water wells or like water filtration systems that makes sense but there's also people who would go back spend like four days there take pictures with a bunch of the kids and be like i hope i left my mark yeah <laughs> Somebody said, uh, was also in defense of her, somebody said, uh, so all these people who record all these evil, violent things on TikTok and IG are okay, but this girl's actually bad for feeling bad and paying this old grandma some money for doing a job. This is why the world is going downhill due to social media. Oh, this was a good comment. Actually, 
I can kind of rock with this comment. It's true because there is a lot of destructive videos out there that people are kind of like, they kind of laugh off. Like someone gets hurt or, or something that is like illegal, like you wreck like property and then they're like, ha, 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 ha. But then this is like, oh, let me type at this yeah, girl. Yeah, obviously, I think on a logical level, messaging Fiona and her boyfriend, attacking them and harassing them is completely OD. But I think it goes to our previous point. There's more dynamics and power dynamics at play than are even acknowledged in right, the comments right. section. It, it is her being a target, her looking like she has a good life. Listen, I think a lot of the people commenting might not get to travel the world with their boyfriend like Fiona does. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that many people in the world get to travel like they do, to be honest. Yeah, they, I mean, do, they do look like they have money, to be honest. Somebody said, uh, I'm so sick of the woke mob coming up with terms like poverty porn. Nobody looks up this type of porn on Pornhub. <laughs> Maybe sympathy porn is a better word, but poverty porn sounds ridiculous to me. Everything's so woke in 2023. Of course, uh, this was a, that was a general comment, sort of like not for or against her, but just like a commentary on society in general. Somebody said, I'm Mexican, and me and my aunt always have this argument. We go to Mexico, and I see how poor everybody is, but I also see their happiness and togetherness, and my mm. aunt sees them in rags and just cries all day. We're both correct, but we're perceiving it and processing it completely different. Mm. I thought that was a really interesting comment, right? Yeah. This is from a Mexican-American, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can have the same person can see and experience. I mean, different people can experience and see the same thing and process it differently. Yeah. All the time. Anyway, man, let's get into the um, takeaways, Andrew. What do we think? Because, you know, I I'm not going to lie. This isn't the most complex topic we ever broke down, you know, ever. But it generated a ton of online interest. You know what I see uh, this whole, like, debate on TikTok or, like, these Next Shark articles? It's kind of like... Asian diaspora training. ADT. ADT, man. It's kind of like this point where we as a community, and the community is like the next shark community, let's just say, for example, or jackfruit community, whatever. Next shark community, it's like you get to come around and talk about what this woman did or did not do wrong. And that can actually change your behaviors and you can actually learn something from that. So it's almost like watching a class discuss something. Like you ever Ooh. had a professor say, Okay, today, class, we're going to be looking at this case. Let's pick it apart and analyze. What did she do wrong? Boom. What did they do right? Boom. Yeah, and honestly, this is way more interesting than learning about the Chinese Exclusion Act in AAS. Yeah, it's one ADT big... ADT is better, man. It is one big manners and behaviors class for Asian Americans. And what I will say that I like, I don't love that she got uh, maybe too much heat against she got super her. super roasted. But... I like that we all had this class and discussion together. You're saying the Harvard Business Review, but for Asian diaspora training. Yeah, so think about it. If you're a food blogger or travel blogger, and you go and do exactly what Fiona did, and you post it, and you get backlash, and you read this article, you can't say you didn't know what was going to happen. Right, uh, because people can go... Um, Court, uh, the court of uh, public opinion would like to refer back to the precedent case set by Fiona Wang versus the Asian public. Uh, yeah. I hope people can learn from this. I get it. There's a lot of hate on the internet. She's a cute girl with her boyfriend. It looks like they have fun. They eat a lot of food. So, of course, they're kind of an easy they target. Do, they do seem a little bit, and by the way, guys, I don't want to be one of these people just going through everybody's internet history. They do kind of look like not the most socioeconomic status minded people. I don't think these people have a, a three degrees in international studies. Yeah, I, I don't They think. seem like fun people who like to spend a lot of money on food in various places in the world. Almost like a Yelp elite crowd. You know, uh, you're running around the world. You're trying to create content. You're eating lots of yummy food. You're trying to have fun. And you're trying to give travel tips, And you right? do something tone deaf and you try to make an emotional piece and you think it's cool and dramatic. And it just, it just, it just comes right back in your face. So that's what happened. But anyways, uh, guys, obviously, you know, I would always recommend people don't spend so much time hating on other people, but learn from it. Learn yeah. from it, please. I, honestly, this whole next shark jackfruit world that has emerged where like maybe a hundred thousand people are commenting on every little, uh, inter-Asian thing that to be honest, other races in America would super not care about is really interesting. Yo, I hope we're becoming smarter and more aware from all this because you can't watch this many people make these many mistakes and not learn from it. And what is it about? I mean, let's be honest, Andrew. TikTok, I mean, YouTubers have even made mistakes, but you have to like shoot something and you have to watch it like 20 times in the edit when you're a YouTuber. When you're a TikToker, Andrew, you're just doing it like in the Uber ride. And then you're just putting it out to the world. So it's somebody's, it's almost like a direct stream of some from somebody's brain, whether calibrated or not. 
Anyways, you guys let me know in the comments down below, was Fiona very wrong, just a little bit wrong? Was she tone deaf or was she totally in the right? And this is, she's just having a human experience and people are just having a bad reaction because she is like a fun, pretty TikTok influencer. Yeah, girl. I'll say one last thing about poverty and seeing poverty. Like, man, not everybody can control what family they were born into. And you can't control what era you were born into either. Everybody knows Asia, for the most part, for the past I want to say 100 years has been poor. A lot of countries, not all, you know, they're still on their timeline, but they're bouncing out of it now. You know what I mean? It's just a, it, it is something that you got to, hey, you I, got you got to know that there's a whole spectrum. Well, you know, being poor to many people is only relative to what you need out of life. So I don't know. Maybe she has everything she needs. Uh, everybody, let us know in the comments down below. Uh, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.